Hey guys, I'm just going to go over how I set up my F-Prop for the first time on my wings, but in this example I'm just going to use a couple of flakes, but the setup will be the same. So I'm using a new F-Prop here, I haven't um, updated or programmed this one yet. Um, I will put Keith's link in which explains the F-Prop um, fully, but basically you've got two ports, uh, 1024 pixels per port, and um, it runs off an SD card. So of course we're going to need an SD card and an SD card reader. So what I'll just mention quickly at the start is if you do get the F-Prop and you um, decide you're, you're going to wire it up first with your prop. So we've got this one here. Uh, there we go, and then um, you may notice this. We'll just plug this in, and we'll plug that in. And there we go. So now the F prop's running, but what you might notice is you might do this you might hit it. You'd be like, oh no, the wiring's wrong. But actually it's just the movement sensor on the um, F-Prop. And that's just letting you know it works. Now did they do this to screw with you when you first plug it in? You're thinking, oh no, my cables aren't right in that. I don't know. But that was my first impression when I got it. But then I remembered the movement sensor there. Um, so anyway, we'll get on to the video. Um, so basically the first thing you want to do here is um, upgrade the firmware on the device and of course uh, you want to go to Pixel Controller, FProp Issues, um, I'll put all the links for these websites in the video description. Uh, so we're on the FProp Issues and this is going to give us the firmware which will be the event player build, that's the one we want. So we just click on that until we go into it and then over here um, You'll see like raw in that. Click on download raw file. And uh, that'll give us the file. Don't uh, right click here, save as or anything. Go to, to do it the way I said so you don't get a corrupt file. Okay, so what you want to do with this file is put on the root of the SD card. Um, so we'll just copy it and then we'll go to the USB drive, which is the SD card. And just put it in the root there. And then we'll take the SD card out and we'll put it in the F prop. This is a clicky one, so just make sure it's clicked in. And then we'll put power to it. And we'll just wait. And what we're going to do is just wait till it starts flashing. Like that. So that basically means that it's done. The light will stay on and it'll sort of pulse slightly. But once it's done, it'll flash like that. So now we know that's done. So we'll just unpower it. Put the SD card back in the computer. And then we'll go and have a look. So now we'll have a log. And so basically what the log will show is that the event player was running. So this is the actual um, event player log. And then this one here is the bootloader log. So basically a firmware file found, checks valid, loading, and basically erased, updating, update applied pretty well, you know, so you know that you've updated the firmware. So that's all good. And um, so at this point you can get rid of those. So the SD card's clean. So okay, now what we need to do is go to the um, programming website. It's a page that um, Pixel Controller has put up. But it's Pixel Controller, Store, Tools, Programming. Again, I'll put the link for this there. Uh, Keith's already explained all of this, and I'll put the link to his video explaining all of this uh, in the video description here. But um, what I'm setting this up for is I'm going to put a flake on each port. And those uh, flakes have 48 pixels in each flake, so we'll just put 48 and 48. And that'll give me more pixels. Um, global brightness can be set here, 
and it's 0 to 255, so 30% of that is, what, 76? Uh, I'm just going to leave that for this. Um, maybe someone else can clarify that, but I'm pretty sure if it's going to be 30%, then it'll be 76 will be your 30% marker there. And then everything else stays the same. Obviously, a color order here. If your pixels are not bullets like mine, Again, Keith's explained all of this, so most of this just stays how it is, apart from your, uh, your pixel counts and your ports. So now we'll go to X-Lights. So now in X-Lights, I've just set up a um, just a temporary folder, uh, a show folder, just so it's separate from my other show. I've just called it F-Prop. Uh, I'm not going to bother with adding a controller here because you can't connect to the F-Prop. Um, you, it, it's just take sequences, so there's no controller connection, so don't worry about adding a controller here. Just go straight to the layout, and then add your um, your props. So I've just got two flakes here, which are 48 pixels. Um, if you've got wings or whatever you want to add, it's the same idea. It's just a different pixel count. So in this, all we're going to go by is setting up start channels. So we're just going to use the start channel with no controller. So on each um, prop, we want to click on one, and then um, we'll come to here, and you'll see where it says controller. So we'll just select use start channel. Now this will probably be already populated for you. See how they are there. Um, so the start channel here is one. You always start on one for the first pixel, unless you've got nulls or whatever. But we're just going to set this up like this. So you start channel there, and that should be good. And then we click on the next one. And that'll automatically jump me to 145. Now the reason for this being is that um, I've got 48 pixels in each flake, and there's one channel for each color, so RGB. So that's three times 48, which gives me the 144. And then the next start channel is one more from that, which is 145. And then yeah, so it's already set here. But if it's not set for you, then like I just said, you just calculate the pixels in your in your prop and then times that by three then add one and that'll get you to your next start channel but x lights does a really good job of basically automatically setting it up so we know the start channels are right now i want to put the left prop on the port one so we'll just come down here to control the connection and just put port one here so now we're on port one and then here port 2 so now that props on port 2 which is there and that pop props on port 1 so we just save that layout and now we can just create a sequence so we're going to go um, new sequence I'm not doing audio so we just do animation and then we'll create then we've got flake one and flake two, so I think I'll just do bars on flake one. Stretch that all the way out. Speed it up a bit. Yeah, on flake two, I think I'll do a pinwheel. Pull that out. Get some thickness. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, and there's the sequence, so we'll just render that. Not that we really need to for that, but um, so now I'll just save it. Uh, call it test. Okay, we'll render it again. So now I'll have a sequence, the FECQ file. So um, what we need to do here. Is we need to go back to that programming web page and then in, under SD files um, don't bother with on board just set it up as SD you can if you want put it on board but you've only got think uh, 15 megabytes of space there but anyway um, I'm just going to add them on SD so I've clicked add one so now I have to drop a file in here so I'll just grab that FECQ file and drop him in there so what this has done is it's basically going to convert that one file. Um, you can set this up to 
um, player mode. So you've got preset patterns in here, which is blank, color wash, whatever. Um, you can play audio from Flash, play animations from Flash, but what we want to do is play animation from SD card. And then, um, however you want to do this, you can play the first file or set it up to what, how many times you want to play files or whatnot. But I'm just going to do random. You can play some uh, looping, whatever, but random. So it just changes it. It's not the same all the time. Um, if I put five files in there, it'll randomly choose which one it wants to play. So for this, I'm just setting it up as random. And that is pretty much all we need to do here. Um, so now you click Generate. So then that gives me a zip file. So that downloaded a zip file. So now with this zip file, you might think you need to put this zip file onto the SD card itself. No, that doesn't work. You need to extract the zip file, so um, take the files out of it. Whenever I've put the zip card directly on the SD card, it doesn't work. So we put the files out of the um, zip file onto the root of the SD card and then we can take the SD card out and put it in the FPROP. Alright, we've got the two flakes here um, so we'll just connect the wiring so the left flake will go on to port 1 and the right flake will go on to port 2. Now put the SD card in there and then we'll just give it some power. Let's pull that down there. Okay, and there we go. So these are the two sequences. So that there's the bars on the left flag, and then there's the pinwheel on the right flag. So as you see, it's um, fairly easy to just create sequences, and you just repeat that process with the, um, all the files. And yeah, just to go over this again, um, as you want to add more sequences to this, you just click add and do your next file, add again, um, add again, and you can keep adding your sequences. So as you make different sequences, um, you're just adding them, drag another one over, drag another one. Um, Keith explained that if you have audio uh, with your sequences, because the FPROP has audio out, you want to add the sequence and then add the audio file after that. So each time you do one, it's sequence, then audio, uh, sequence, then audio for each sequence that you do. So um, the audio for the sequence must follow the sequence that you put in. So it'll be one, or, uh, one sequence, one audio, two sequence, two audio. Um, and yeah, but for most of us, we're just going to be using this type of prop as um, just for animations. So it'll just be sequence, sequence, sequence. And then again, you can set them up how you want here. Um, you can set up uh, inputs like triggers for the FPROP. So say like button presses or um, other inputs like PIR sensors, uh, proximity sensors, stuff like that, ultrasonic sensors, or just simple button presses. So if you were using this for wings, you could um, have it so when somebody presses a button, it plays the sequences from the SD cards on the wings when they press the button. Uh, I haven't looked into it, whether there's scripting, uh, whether there's timeouts or anything. Uh, I really haven't looked into that part, but as they progress this, it'd be really cool if they could add some sort of basic scripting. So you could um, set timeouts or, you know, maybe expand on it a little bit more, but uh, the time will tell for that. But for what it is now, uh, this is all we've got. So anyway, I hope that helps you setting one of these up just to play basic sequences on uh, props. Even Tune 2 signs, you can set up a sequence and literally just have this play Tune 2. And then that way you only need to run power to this. You don't need to worry about uh, connections, Wi-Fi, nothing like that. Just power this little thing. Um, it takes 5 or 12 volt, so this was 12 volt that I was powering it with, they're 12 volt pixels, so uh, you can put 5 in here or 12 and it'll run it. 
You don't need to worry about voltage step downs or anything. It'll take 12 here and it'll put 12 out the pixel ports. If you put 5 in here, it'll put 5 out the pixel ports. So um, it's really good for that. It's very simple. And um, yeah, I hope this helps anyway.